back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, as you can see, I have a whole stack of books because I wanted to talk about some of my go-to books. Just like, you know how you have those go-to movies where if you don't have anything to watch, you know, you'll go back to that movie that you just love. This is the same thing, but it's just with books. These books, if I don't know what to read or, you know, if I'm in a reading stuff or something like that, I'll pick these books up and kind of like skim through them or read some of the, you know, passages that I highlighted or tabbed and then it'll like jar my mind to like, you know, starting a new book or reading something else. Yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so first you guys know I talk about this author so many times. I discovered her about two years ago and ever since then I have been hooked. That is, of course, Donna Hill. Here are some of my Donna Hill uh, books. Now I would say the one I always go to is these two, which is the ones I first started with. Rhythms, I've talked about this before. And then this is What Mother Never, what Mother Never Told Me. This is the sequel to this. And if you like, what was the book that everybody was talking about? Vanishing Half, you will like this book because it's like that but with a flip if you know what i mean i don't want to give it away but her writing is amazing amazing next is chimamanda ngozi adiche i always say when i got back into reading i got back into african literature and girl i mean chimamanda is my favorite she's one of my favorite authors but i would say she's my favorite author of all times when it comes to african literature not african-american literature but african literature because I always say with African literature, they know how to tell stories. They are fantastic storytellers. And if you're ever in a reading slump, I would say pick up an African literature book, preferably fiction. Contemporary fiction is always good. And like I said, I'm a Chimamanda fan. So I would say, look, pick up a Chimamanda book. My favorite probably is Americana. I love Americana so much. Um, and with her, like, Although if you do read articles about her or just also read or listen to her um, interviews, extremely intellectual, I mean, a brilliant mind. And you would think like, okay, her mind is <laughs> so just, she's so factual, okay? She, where you would think her books are going to be kind of boring and a little like, no shade to nonfiction, but you know, I say about nonfiction, it can be laborious not with her writing because she simply writes love stories this is a love story really just get in the mind of Ofimalu and um obenze girl obenze who he had my heart even though what he did bro why did you do that okay but it was kind of like oh i don't care but i would say next i really do like purple hibiscus this is her debut novel and girl that daddy that daddy will make you hate every daddy in the world okay <laughs> because this man oh my gosh he was extremely religious where it came off as crazy it's like that's not righteous bruh not righteous at all jesus would not want you to do that look wwjd okay uh-uh the stuff he did to his wife and his daughter and his son but when i tell you this is a get this is a good get back story really really good this did not read like a debut novel next of course oh my gosh y'all know how much i love this author and i love this book i love this book so much where look no shame in my game okay i'm gonna just show y'all yellow wife and why do i have three copies and why <laughs> do i have two that is annotated okay so when this book first came out i did not read it but it was on my list and about a year later i remember i was at target this was with my sister and sometimes when i'm with my sister i'll be like hey can you give me this book and she'll look at me like girl you know you can buy this book and she would say put it in the cart so i put it in the cart she bought it for me and it was on my TBR for 2021 because this book came out in 2020. And after I read this book, y'all, I was like, 
why did I not put this on the list sooner? <sighs> Phoebe Dolores Brown, a character that you will never forget. Ruben Lapierre, a character you would never forget. I still be thinking about July, one of the enslaved girls, and it's like, first of all, that baby's not even a real person. That is a character from a book. That's how deep this book runs for me, okay? This book also made me have a different perspective when it came to slavery and also slavery themed books because I had that mentality before I read this book. Like, you know, when I would see an author and I'll read the synopsis and if it had like, you know, slavery, if it was a slavery themed book, I'm like, oh girl, like, come on now. Girl, this again, like, you know, another slavery themed book. After I read this and after I watched some interviews with Sidiqua Johnson talking about the book and her inspiration, and I said, you know what? I don't want to have that mentality because you realize how long slavery was. You realize the brutality of it. It's, I mean, brutality is an understatement when it comes to slavery. And there's millions of stories that has not even been documented or hasn't even been you know showcased for readers to read so it's like no you don't need to have a mentality every time you see a book that is slavery thing like oh girl not this again no no ma'am and when she broke it down like that i changed my perspective this book i it's hard to read it has some very hard scenes because like i said it's slavery it's brutality and the things that ruben lapierre did was not even humane and the fact that it was based on a real man named Robert Lumpkins and like I said watched some interviews with the author and she was explaining her inspiration how this was you know historical fiction that's when I really started researching you know her work and in researching this book and y'all know if I really love a book I will get two copies because I will get one fresh copy where this is the one I didn't highlight, I didn't tab, it's just my pretty, you know, copy. And then I'll get another one where I like, you know, tab and highlight, okay? But after, and when I tell you, I mean, wrote all through this. And then I was like, I love this book so much where whenever it comes out like a new edition, I want to get it. Like that's how obsessed I am with this book. So I have to get the paper. Um, edition so i have to get the paperback edition and then i read this book three times <laughs> yeah you see i have a problem okay but that book is fantastic and she's an auto buy for me so when she came out with her second historical fiction novel last year uh i actually bought it the day that it came out i have a vlog about this book the house of eve the day that it came out um and i read it and of course I liked it so much that I have two copies and again this is the copy that I bought for myself and I asked my sister could she buy <laughs> another copy and she did. Shockingly I did not get the paperback for this book and I came this close but I'm like okay Alexis you can't just have so many duplicates like girl you barely can fit books in this room okay. so. Even though I like this book, but like this was a five for me and this is like a 10 for me, okay? And the fact that her books are totally different, I mean, yeah. Okay, next is an urban fiction series, of course. Love urban fiction. And it is Wahida Clark, the Thug series. You guys know, I've talked about this before. There is six, no, seven books from this series, but I always tend to read and go to I think it's this one no 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 it's this one every thug needs a lady so the first book is thugs and the women who love them and then it's this one every thug needs a lady and then it is this one uh thug macaroni and I love these editions these are newer editions that came out I believe this one came out last year or two years ago um, because the rest of them, they're not like this. And I was so happy to get these because they're watercolor. And you guys know how much I love watercolor. So, yeah, this was like my 
first urban fiction series that I got into and was obsessed because I was late in the game when it came to reading urban fiction. I was in my late 20s when I read urban fiction and girl. And when I stumbled up on this at Walmart back in 2019, I was like, oh my goodness, because these girls, although they're in like the hood and like they're a product of their environment, but these girls are so smart. I mean, you, a lawyer, a scientist, a physical therapist, and although it has like the shooting, the fighting, the killing, so much sex, it still is it's so good y'all it is so good and then lastly is another african literature um author and it is his only wife by peace is aduze mindy she's also an automatic buy i bought her newest book that came out last year night bloom i also did a reading vlog on that book really liked it but this one five stars does not read like a debut novel oh this is so good you have a young girl named Mafi. She is, they, she kind of grew up a little bit poor um, because her father died when she was younger. So her mother is really needing her to marry up, marry a man that has wealth and, you know, is established and all this. And it's set in Ghana. So she agrees to marry a man that she has never met at all. The day of their wedding, like he doesn't show up to their wedding. It's not uncommon in like the African culture to have a woman, you know, get married and her husband is not at the ceremony. And she finally meets him, you know, after a couple of days. And now the next step is to produce a baby. So yes, but this, that mom got me. Oh my gosh. Because although this book is kind of serious, it has, Afi is kind of funny, the way that she, and she doesn't mean to be funny, but though the dialogue, especially with her and her mother, is hilarious. There was one scene I always love to read where um, he like ends up leaving and the mom, her mom's like, you know, what did you do? And she's like, I didn't do anything. Like I've been doing exactly what you guys have been telling me to do and all of that um and she you know tell us some other stuff and she's like okay girl i don't want to hear all of that it is hilarious and then they got a scene towards the end it's a good read okay when i tell you look i love a fee but that sister-in-law she read her okay oh my gosh it was it was a nini read okay yeah this book you know what i need to reread this book because i haven't read this book since it came out and that was back in 2020 yeah that was back and this you know what this is another book that my sister bought for me when we were at Target. I'd be getting in and I'd be shopping with my sister, okay? And like I said, she is an automatic buy. Her book's fantastic. So yeah, guys, that is it when it comes to my go-to books. As you can see, some of these, I got multiple copies because clearly I have a problem when it comes to buying multiple books. I have been very good lately. I haven't had a book that I just recently have had to buy like a second copy because I love it so much and hopefully I will hopefully that continues but look you never know but yeah so far it hasn't happened yet but yeah guys that's all I have for you and I'll be back with more black books bye